here I have a conical pendulum. It's called a conical pendulum because it sweeps out a cone, that, including the string. Including the string, it sweeps out a cone. Conical pendulum. And it has a very specific period, time it takes to go around once. And you can see that the ball is going around in a horizontal circle. The goal of conical pendulum questions is to relate the speed to the vertical angle, the angle measured to the vertical of the, that the stream make, makes. You know that if it's going slow, you've probably been on rides like this at the fair or at Disneyland. If it's going slow, the angle is quite small relative to the vertical. The faster it goes, the ball swings out and makes a greater and greater angle. That The goal again is to match, or what's the relationship between the speed of the ball and the angle that it makes. And then I'll put some numbers in to solve for that. So draw a force diagram. Well, first off, let's draw a picture. So there's the ball. Remember, it's going around in a vertical circle. And so in, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's going around in a horizontal circle in the horizontal plane. Horizontal plane. There is some angle that it makes, theta. I'm going to, when I put in numbers, I'm going to say that that angle is 20 degrees. And I want to match, uh, for this length, this thing uh, is going to be some length L. And let's just say, for the fun of it, that L is 0.7 meters. I want to express uh, I want to express the speed in terms of the angle. So we're looking for the speed of this. I'm just going to draw a force diagram right on here. And then I'm going to go to the side. But there's your tension towards the center. And then you've got the weight. Just going to label the weight mg. It's probably too. That's too long. But there's your weight directed down. Okay, let me redraw this. The force diagram. There's mg. There's the tension. Now the temptation is to turn this into an inclined plane. Don't do that. This is moving in a horizontal plane. Because it's moving in a horizontal plane, that means that in the vertical axis, these must be balanced. So in other words, Ty, Ty must equal mg. It's, and then Tx, because it's a horizontal circle, that's the unbalanced force that causes this to go around in a circle. That's the centripetal force. I'm going to shift this Ty over here. It doesn't really matter. That's Ty. And that's going to be equal to mg, right? Ty equals mg. There's no other force up and down. This angle is that, no, sorry. This is the angle up here, excuse me. So there's your 20 degree angle. OK, centripetal force causes the mass to accelerate, to turn in a horizontal plane. So net centripetal force is due to Tx. And that equals the mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r, mass times centripetal acceleration. So now we just need to find Tx in terms of mg, the mass of the ball times 9.8. Well, how do we do that? Tangent of this angle is Tx over Ty. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So Tx equals Ty tan theta, which is mg tan theta. So that's Tx. mg 
tan theta. Well, it's going to be mv squared over r, but we need to find r. r is not the length of the, of the string because the center of the circle is right here. The center of the circle is right here, not at the top. It's going in a horizontal circle around that point. So I also need to find that distance here. Well, the hypotenuse of this triangle is L. The angle is still theta, 20 degrees. It's the same angle as that one. So that distance is R. R is right there. Notice this is a triangle of R and L. This, so these are lengths. This is a triangle of forces. So let's go ahead and find that. So that's going to be sine, right? The sine of that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of theta equals r over l. So r equals l sine theta. So this is kind of ugly. mg tan theta, that's tx, equals mv squared over r, and r is L sine theta. This solve for v. So v equals the square root, because it's square root, the square root of, oh, by the way, the m's cancel. m over here, m over there. The m's cancel out. So this equals L times g sine theta tan theta. What did I say? L is 0.7 times 9.8 times the sine of 20 times the tangent of 20. And that one, if I did it correctly, came out to be 0.92 meters per second. 0.92 meters per second. But the main point to get from this is that the uh, speed is proportional to the angle. It's proportional to all of that, which is a bit of a pain. Anyhow, wasn't that fun?